Okay, Gary A. Pace, we're going to have a welding rant on pre-qualified WPS parameters and how to figure them out and where do we go and kind of just sorting through some of this information. I get a question every now and then from people asking, how do I, how do I decide what amperages I should use? I'm working off of 2015. I know we're in the middle of a change over to the new code, but most of this hasn't changed. So I'm just going to run with what I got from 2015 version of the code. And you guys can sift through, you know, 2020 version and go from there. So um, all pre-qualified WPSs need to be prepared and written as pre-qualified WPSs. This means that all WPSs have to be written down. You can't just say, well, we're welding it. It's pre-qualified. We don't need to write it down. No, you need to give a WPS to the welder and have a written instruction. And if we read in what's in the red box, the welding parameters set forth in Table 3.6 shall be specified on the written WPS and for variables within limits within the range shown. And this is what really causes people some angst and disruption and issues in their life is they're like okay so now what do I do how do I know where to go and what to do here's an example of that table um, I think I took this out of 2010 which I think was table 3.7 but whatever it's the same table what I'm looking at in the red is within the range of recommend recommended operation by the filler metal manufacturer for stick welding maximum current how, how do I know on a pre-qualified WPS what to give these guys for a range? How do I know what to do? Well, we need to look at... Okay, so I've gotten a couple of questions on writing WPSs and PQRs, but mainly for like WPSs for AWS D1.1 structural steel, and let's say you're going to do a pre-qualified welding procedure. Uh, pre-qualified WPS. The question I get is, how do I know what amperage to put on there or what voltage? Well, to me, the main point is act like a grown-up. One of the things that it tells you in the code is that you need to look at the manufacturer's recommendations. So for the manufacturer's recommendations, a lot of times, it's going to be, they're going to tell you, okay, run it between this amperage and this amperage. I've got one pulled up here on a screen that I'm not going to show you, but um, or maybe I'll splice it in later with a slide, depending on how I slice and dice this thing. But um, the manufacturer's recommendation for 7018 eighth inch is between 90 and 150 amps. So if I'm writing a WPS with that, does it make sense to have an amperage on there for the welder to follow of 300 amps? No, no, that doesn't make sense. The codes, a lot, they don't ever say this in the codes, and this is my interpretation, but a lot of it is act with common sense and act like a grown up. So for in this one, 90 to 150 amps. I probably wouldn't give a welder that wide of a range, depending on what we're doing. Maybe if we're in a flat position and I know he's just going to be puking metal in there, I might go 140 to 150. And if somebody questions it, all right, said we could run that in the manufacturer's recommendation, I'm covered. Or maybe if we're on a little on the cooler side, I might go, um, let's say, 90 to 115 is that a pretty reasonable range to give to give a guy i think so i could defend that um but if you're if if you're going you know 50 to 300 for eighth inch 7018 i don't think that's necessarily a something that i could defend to another engineer or to an inspector or to another party that's involved so a lot of it is just using some common sense, looking at the manufacturer's recommendations and saying, hey, does this make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I could defend that. I could go back, pull up their literature and say, yeah, I decided to go 90 to 115. Much beyond that, I think my guys are running out of control or um, 
But that's kind of generally my philosophy on it. So here's some information that I gleaned from the Hobart Brothers website for their 7018 and the recommended amperages. This is what they say this stuff should be run at. So if we let's just take eighth inch um, 7018, 90 to 150 amps. So I, for me, I like to use when I write a WPS, especially pre-qualified. I like to have something that's defensible. If I if I put down 500 amps on this or 300 amps for eighth inch filler material, does that make sense? No. It. I don't like to give the welders too much. Um, leeway and I generally don't like to color outside the lines on this kind of stuff so if you're looking at eighth inch a reasonable number might be 90 to 120 or maybe if you're running it in a flat position and a little hotter all right give them from you know one 130 to 150 or 130 to 145 to me I just like to have a number that's defensible so if anybody ever challenged me on it I could come back and say hey this is what I got Okay, summary. Gets back to, do our parameters make sense? Are we acting like grown-ups? Are we coloring outside the lines? You know, did you give, a, did you give the welder on their WPS a, a number that makes sense? You know, is it, is it rooted in reality or is it just out there in the ether somewhere? Um, is it within the boundaries of the manufacturer's recommendation? You know, does... One, and this gets back to it making sense. Does it make sense? Is it within, you know, the boundaries of what the manufacturer says this filler material should run at? And can you defend your parameters to a third party? If you've got to submit this for review to, you know, some kind of third party organization, can you defend your, your decision making, why you wrote it like this? Or is it just complete, you know, an utter, I don't know, fantasy that you're going to use these parameters so anyways that's kind of my approach to it questions gary pace pe katie texas gpacex at gmail.com texaswelding engineering.com